Welcome back to another episode of Platinum Grilling. I am your host, Chef Sean O'Neill. Today, I'm showing you how the sausage is made. That's right, we are doing a smoky jalapeno cheddar kielbasa. That's all coming up right now on Platinum Grilling. What is up, Pit Boss Nation? I am so excited to be cooking for you again today. We are making some sausage. I'm gonna be making one of my favorite sausages, actually. It's my smoky jalapeno cheddar kielbasa. We're making sausage, but we're also taking it a step further because we're making a cured sausage, a cured fresh sausage um, using pink salt. Pink salt is a curing salt, and it's only colored pink, so you know not to use it as a regular salt um, in your daily cooking. Um, but what it is, it's a mixture of salt and sodium nitrite used in curing processes. Um, it's used in everything from salami to hams to mortadella, everything that you know that's basically in your butcher's counter or at a nice charcuterie shop, um, Salumeria. It's made with pink salt and it's really nothing to be scared of. I know we, we see here nitrites and things like that and we kind of, our mind starts racing, but pink salts are nothing to be scared of. You obviously don't want to season your food or season any meat with it. Um, it is used as a curing salt. What it does is it retains that beautiful pink color, but it also extends shelf life. Um, so it, it fights off bacteria um, and anything like that that could attack the meat and spoil the meat. We're making a fresh sausage today, a fresh kielbasa, so we're really more focused on the texture and the color that the pink salt gives us. Um, yes, we are going to cure this. I'm not going to lie to you. This is a two-day process. Um, I start early in the mornings with the initial curing. I let it cure for about eight hours and then I stuff the sausage, let it cure overnight, and then I'll smoke the sausage and grill the sausage tomorrow. Sausage making is a process, and you want to have all of your ingredients fairly cold as you go through this. Not at this first stage, but we'll talk about that in a little bit. So, let's get started making our sausage. I'm excited to make this one. Um, I love making sausage. I love making pasta too. It's those things that you make with your hands completely from scratch that I think elevate your cooking. Um, and get you more involved in your cooking and make you want to cook more. All right, enough talk. Let's start cooking some sausage, guys. We're gonna see how the sausage is made. So right here I have one and a half pounds of pork belly, um, just cut into a dice. I like to cut my dices when, I'm, when I know I'm gonna grind a little bit longer than fatter. The reason being, because once it gets down into the, the little hole here down into the tunnel, the grinder picks that up a little bit better, right? If it's fat, it kind of sits there and bobs. If it's like this, the grinder can pick it up and move it into the actual blade and grind process through. All right, so here we have some beef chuck, one and a half pounds, so even parts beef chuck and pork belly. Okay, so now we can start adding our spices. Um, so first thing we're gonna do is one, one tablespoon of dried mustard. Just kind of spread it around in there fairly evenly. Then we have one and a half teaspoons of the Pit Boss Smoke Infused Rubs. This is the Sweet Mesquite Jalapeno. Because we're doing a jalapeno cheddar kielbasa, the jalapeno really plays well with the other flavorings that we've got going on. Then we've got one and a half teaspoons of kosher salt, two teaspoons of ground white pepper. The pepper is really one of the main spices, one of the main seasonings. The pepper and the mustard is really what you're gonna taste um, when the kielbasa is cooked. The, the jalapeno rub is gonna really meld with the jalapeno and the cheddar, and that's gonna come together as a singular flavor. That's why I like using this one so much. All right, so this is another ingredient you may not have on hand. This is dextrose, and dextrose is just corn sugar. Um, we're gonna use about a half a teaspoon of this. The reason we use this instead of regular sugar is because it's incredibly fine, okay? So we're gonna use this uh, to really blend and mix well within the, the sausage. And then we're gonna use about a half a teaspoon, and you wanna be pretty accurate with this, we're gonna use about a half a teaspoon of our pink curing salt here. All right, so I'm gonna grab a glove, we'll get this all mixed up, and we'll let it cure. <clears throat> I like to throw a couple gloves on and get in there with my hands. It's really the best way to know that that spice mix has been mixed around and that there's no little clumps anywhere. So get down to the bottom and just start mixing everything around. You really wanna make sure that pink salt is, has had a chance to cover or at least touch all of the meat. Um, we're gonna mix this one time um, as it's in the fridge. 
curing just to make sure that we do have full coverage of all the spices, the pink salt, the mustard, the white pepper, the sweet mesquite jalapeno from Pit Boss's smoke infused rubs. We really want to make sure that all the meat has that flavor, right? We don't want to get to a pocket of our sausage that is flavorless or unseasoned. So we'll give this a good mix. Okay, so we've got this all mixed up. Um, we're going to transfer it to a sheet tray now. And then we're going to place this in the fridge. Okay, so at least eight hours on this up to overnight. You really want to give that cure time to penetrate the meat. We're also going to let it sit in the sausage casing for a little while. So eight hours should be enough time because um, once we stuff it, it will have a little bit. It will have about another eight to 12 hours to cure in the casing. Um, that also gives us time to develop a little bit of a pellicle on the sausage. So some smoke sticks to it. But for now, we're going to wrap this in plastic wrap. We're going to throw it in the fridge eight hours. All right, our meat is cured. Don't worry about uh, any of the discoloration here on the beef. That is just the cure in action. When you actually stuff it and cook it, it's gonna have that beautiful pink color and the texture is gonna be silky, smooth, and delicious. If you wanted to make fresh sausage, this is your starting point. You don't have to worry about doing the cure. You basically want all your meat cut up like this on a sheet tray as flat as you can get it. Um, and you're gonna start from here adding your spices uh, into the stand mixer as we mix everything together. If you don't want to do a uh, kielbasa like we're doing today, we're doing the jalapeno cheddar kielbasa, you could definitely switch this up, do a fresh cured chorizo, a fresh cured andouille, just change the spices. I mean, that's really all sausage is. It's just a change of spices. The basic ingredients are the same worldwide, fat and meat, um, whether it be pork, beef, lamb, chicken, seafood, lobster um, is one that comes to mind. That changes, but it's, the basic two ingredients, it's fat and meat. All right, so from here what we're gonna do is we are going to get this all frozen. When you're working with sausage, you want all of your components, your equipment, everything that you're working with to be as cold as possible so you don't melt the fat. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna take our bowl off here. I've got my paddle attachment, which I will be using later. We've got our grinder here, we're gonna take that off. We'll add this to the bowl. And then we'll take our stuffer and all of this is going into the freezer. And then what some people forget sometimes is this guy. This is where all that pressure pushes the sausage into the tube and eventually into the sausage casing. So we want to freeze all this. We're going to put this in the freezer. We're going to let it sit for one hour and then we will get back to grinding and stuffing our sausage. All right, everything is nice and frosty. It's got a, that little crisp on the outside of the meat. So let's go ahead and attach our grinder here. Um, you can use any kind of grinder. I just happen to have the stand mixer attachment. Um, and then our bowl is nice and frosty too. I saved the stand mixer bowl in the freezer because we're going to use that um, to actually mix everything. So we're going to grind this twice. So we'll pull that bowl out um, after the first grind. All right. All right, so to start grinding, you really want to alternate fatty piece, beefy piece, porky piece um, as much as you can. Um, obviously, it won't work out perfectly, but you want to try to alternate it as, as best as possible. So we'll grab our little plunger here. Thing nice and cold, none of this fat. We don't have to worry about it, any of this fat melting. Um, that's the big thing about keeping everything cold when you're grinding meat for sausage is you want that fat to stay as intact as possible um, before it actually hits heat. That way it stays juicy. If you, if you get rid of the fat now, um, if it melts away now, then you don't have anything to really make that sausage nice and moist and juicy. All right, keep working our way through this. Fatty peas, beefy peas, fatty peas, beefy peas, all the way to the end. Our ratio is gonna be around 65% meat to 35% fat. We want a cured sausage to be a little bit more fatty than a regular fresh sausage would be, um, but the ratios are still pretty close to what a fresh sausage would be. So we've run our machine, our stand mixer, fairly slow throughout this process. We don't want it again to heat up um, and, and heat up, in turn, heat up the, the fat inside the meat here. Um, at the end, I am gonna crank it up 
and that's just to get it, try to clear anything out of the tube. There is going to be a little bit stuck in there. It's just one of the things that, that's going to happen when you're making sausage. All right, so we're not going to return our grinder to the freezer this time. It's still, it's still pretty cold. We're only going to let that sit in there for about five minutes just to chill it because we're actually going to mix some ice into the meat mixture just to make sure we keep it as cold as possible. Okay, so now we've got our stand mixer bowl so it's nice and frosty cold. We're also going to add about a cup of, of crushed ice to our, our meat mixture here um, just to really help keep that fat cold. Making sausage is all about helping keep that fat cold as cold as possible. Um, throughout the process. There's about a half a cup. Whoopsies. <laughs> There's about a half a cup. All right, <clears throat> glove up for this. Just mix it a little bit. The grinder is going to help you do some of that work too. So just make sure that the ice is kind of incorporated down to the bottom of the bowl so it's not all going into the front side um, in the first part of the meat that we load. So we're gonna grind this again. And our plunger will come in super handy this time because this is uh, gonna get a little bit, little bit messy. But this helps with that very smooth texture that we want to have with kielbasa. All right, so just slowly push everything through. Take your time, sausage is not rushed, you can't rush this. I mean, it's gotta be something that's kind of done with, with intent. Every move you make has to have a reason that, uh, behind why you're doing it. You can see it's got a different texture now. So that, as compared to this, is a much better texture for sausage. This is much smoother, so you're gonna get a cleaner taste. Plus all of your ingredients are gonna be much more incorporated. This process will take a little bit longer than just grinding the meat regularly because you have a certain amount of pieces. This kind of takes a little bit of stuffing and jamming and plunging. And... All right, so we'll continue grinding this meat. And then we'll get the rest of our sausage going. All right, so we are just finishing up our second grind here. We ground the meat uh, twice through the grinder um, on a small die. And the second time through, we've added about a cup of ice. Now I'm gonna let this finish up. I'm gonna transfer it back into the freezer. Just let it sit there for a few minutes um, before we mix it up one last time and then send it through the stuffer in the freezer. Okay guys, so now if you were making regular sausage, this is the time where you'd add your spice blends um, and anything else like you see here. I've got the cheddar cheese, the diced jalapeno, and we're also using some milk powder. This is a malted milk powder, which goes great when you have that snap of the sausage and that smooth cured interior. Oh, one of my favorite things. All right, so my stand mixer is on its last leg, so <laughs> bear with it. We'll add in our milk powder, and remember our paddle has been in the freezer as well. We'll add in our jalapenos. I used one and a half jalapenos, and then I used about four ounces of cheddar, and we cut them into small blocks. You want to make sure that there's none stuck together. The, the, obviously the stand mixer will help with that too. Um, but just give it a little hand. Make sure that you don't see anything that are stuck together. And into the pool with everybody else. All right, like I said, the stand mixer is on its last leg. So we started on low, and we're just gonna let everything incorporate. All right, so you're probably gonna have to stop the machine and scrape it out of the blades just a little bit. You can see it's already got that nice pink color which is from the cure. You know how it looked a little brown earlier? Now it's got that nice pink hue to it. Um, that's exactly what you want to see. All right, so let's give this another little mix. That looks pretty good. All right, make sure you get all your meat off of your, your paddle attachment. And then we're gonna throw this guy back in the freezer and get set up, ready to stuff this. We're gonna see how the sausage is made. Whew, okay. Back from the freezer for the final time, I promise. I think. <laughs> No, we're good. We're, we're no more freezer, no more back and forth. You know, it's just, it's a matter of process. It's a matter of, of doing it right. So the next process is a two person process, but I'm gonna do it as one. So again, please don't laugh at me wrestling with this machine. Um, first things first, we have to transfer our meat to the uh, sausage stuffing container. Even this would be easier with two people, but let's go ahead, just jam it right on in there. So we've got about three pounds of meat from my butcher. I asked for about six feet of sausage casing. 
that should get us through that should get us through the whole three pounds of, uh, of meat that we have. Before you actually put your sausage casing on, you want to push some of that filling down towards the end here, just to where it just passes the end. Just like that. Okay. So now we have to dig out. Oh, look at that. First, first try. That doesn't happen often. So we've got natural hog casings here. Um, you can get salt packed or if you do know a butcher, you can get them from your butcher. Salt packed are easily available online. Um, butchers that make their own sausage, which any good reputable butcher, butcher will be doing, will definitely have sausage casing on hand. Like I said, we've got about six feet for our three pounds and let's see if we can since I found it so easy, it will probably be impossible to find the opening. All right, that's usually how it works out. Oh, there we go. All right, so even though it, since I did that, I want to kind of push that out a little bit. All right, now we're going to get our casing on. Because it's been sitting in water, we don't really need to worry about this. If you want to, if you're, if you're newer to making sausage, you can spray this down with a little bit of oil or soak it, just kind of rub it down with some water, and that will kind of help your slickness, I guess, if you will. All right, so we're gonna get as much of this on as I feel necessary. All right, we'll just get the whole whole skin on there. All right, so from here, I wanna make sure there's no air in there before I tie this guy off, right? So we'll tie it fairly long. This is a tricky part, because it is super slippery. All right, there we go, and we'll push it down towards the sausage as much as possible. And then we'll tighten it up on the sausage. All right, <clears throat> now comes the tricky part, working by yourself. So. Generally, I would have some help here. You really just want to take your time, let the sausage do the work, let the machine do the work. If you notice any spots, go in and feel it. Make sure it's nice and tight, not over packed, but nice and tight. So what I'm looking for is about 15 inch rings. That seems to be a good um, size that will fit in the upper smoking cabinet of the Lockhart. Um, so I'm going to cut these at about 15 inches and make rings out of them. And just take your time, just work your way through it. As with everything in sausage, it's all about time and doing it the right way. It's pretty good. All right. So from here, we're going to pull off a little bit. I need to grab a knife. All right, and you want to you want to give yourself some room because we're going to tie these together into rings too after we tie it to close it. All right. So we're going to tie this to close it off, push down the meat, make sure you've got no air in there. I just saw a little air pocket, so we'll just rub our fingers like that. Just rub our way up. Give it a nice tie and push it down to the meat as much as you possibly can. You can see I've got a little air pocket in there. You might be able to fill it and maneuver it around, um, but we'll get our little, little pincher, little hole poker, um, and just get rid of any little air pockets that you might see. That looks pretty good. That's a nice kielbasa sausage ready to go on the smoker. All right, so we've got our third sausage done there. Um, you want to make sure that they're not touching. We're going to let this sit in the fridge and let that pellicle form. Um, basically, we're going to let the skin dry, the casing dry out, um, become a little tacky and dry. That's going to A, help smoke stick to it. Um, B, it's also going to help get that snap that we love so much in sausage. So we're going to let these guys sit for at least four hours and up to overnight in the fridge, and then we'll get them on the smoker. What well, we are done in the kitchen and back poolside here in Las Vegas. Uh, again, we are cooking on the Pit Boss Platinum Series Lockhart, um, and we are doing these amazing kielbasa sausages. So we started off by curing these with pink salt and our seasonings for about eight hours. Then we went ahead and stuffed them and let them cure and dry overnight. Um, if you feel these, they're no longer slippery, they're tacky, and also the meat has set up a little bit. Um, and that tackiness is going to allow smoke to stick to it, and then since we let it dry in the fridge uncovered overnight, that's what's gonna give us that nice snap that we love from sausage um, because our casings are nice and dry. So we've got our Pit Boss Platinum Series Lockhart set to 300 degrees. It's almost there. Um, 300 degrees in the grill is going to give us up around 200 degrees up here in the upper smoking chamber. Um, we're just smoking these until perfectly done. Um, we're going to insert a probe inside of those into one of the sausages so we can keep an eye on what the internal temperature is. And then we're going to shock them in ice water and I'll tell you why um, when we get to that point. But for now let's get started. Um, first thing I want to do is take some of these grates out of the upper smoking chamber of the uh, Lockhart. We won't need them. We want our sausages to hang. We're going to be using um, some of the um, included 
sausage hooks, basically. Um, but you get six of these if you purchase a Lockhart, um, and they are great for sausage. They are the best thing to use to cook sausage because you get that full encapsulating smoke. Um, around the sausage so you don't have one side that's got like that kind of sogginess um, if you put sausage down on a grill grate so let's get going here let's take out three of our grates and the Lockhart has a great bottom shelf down here just like it's out of the way down there so we do need to leave one in there and that's where we're going to hang our hooks so in the Lockhart your heat source is over here so this is where the heat comes in and then obviously distributes around the upper smoking cabinet. When I'm doing sausage, I try to stay on this half, um, unless obviously I'm filling the, the, the cabinet up. But I try to stay on this half, I'll put the bigger sausages here and then this little guy we'll put over there. Um, and then we'll put a thermometer in one of the sausages that's closest to the heat source. All right, so let's get our hooks in here. Kind of stagger these guys around. There we go, and now let's hang our sausage. So we'll put this little guy back at the back here. Perfect. This is our biggest one, so let's put him right there. And make sure that they're not touching the walls, they're not touching each other. That's a big one. You don't want to have a, a raw spot right here if they were if they were touching like that. Then you could have a raw spot right there. Obviously that skin or the, the casing would not cook either. All right, so we've got our sausage hung. Now we will get our probe in there. We're gonna cook this to about 160, 165 is our, our finish temperature. Um, but we're, since we're gonna put this in an ice bath right away, there's not gonna be a lot of carryover cooking. So we're gonna cook it to about 160, 162, somewhere in that range, and immediately transfer it into an ice bath, and I'll tell you why later. All right, so sausage is on the smoker. It's been a couple day process, but we are here to the cooking point. Um, it's gonna take about two hours, somewhere in that range. Like I said, we're looking for 160 degrees. Now let's make our shallot mustard sauce. All right, so this mustard sauce really couldn't get any easier. Throw stuff in a bowl, mix it together, throw it in the fridge till you're ready to use it. Today we're using one of the Pit Boss smoke infused seasonings. Um, we're using the smoked hickory honey salt, honey sea salt. Uh, I love this stuff. It is sweet, it's salty, it's delicious. It can't, can't get much better. Um, so. Let's get started on our mustard sauce. Okay, so I've got some stone ground mustard here. We've got maybe about a fourth of a cup, in between a fourth and a half of a cup. You really don't have to be super precise on this. And if you, if you don't like the flavor, you wanna change something at the end, just add a little bit more of the stone ground mustard or a little bit more of the Dijon or the shallot. You know, you can adapt this. So you don't have to be super precise. Um, but I will say I've got roughly, roughly two tablespoons of Dijon mustard about one teaspoon of apple cider vinegar, and then about one teaspoon of honey as well. All right, we'll get our shallots in. This is one large shallot, and then we'll season this with our Pit Boss honey sea salt. And you can even smell the honey and the smoke on this guy. It's really, really unique. So this goes great as like a burger topping too. I mean, it, it's a great all around condiment, um, but I would say that it's, it's perfect home <laughs> is, is that this kielbasa that we're making. Um, it goes so good with the smokiness from the grill, the jalapeno, the cheddar, um, and then all the seasonings that we use, the mustard, the pepper. Um, it really works well with this mustard sauce. So, all right, we've got it nicely combined. Make sure you get everything fully incorporated in there. All right, that looks pretty good. We'll put this in the fridge, wrap it up, put it in the fridge, let it sit. It will last a week in the fridge um, before the shallots start turning a little bit. All right, let's check on our sausage. All right, so I was keeping an eye on my Smoke IT app inside and we are at 160 degrees um, internal temperature on the one that we probed. So what I did was I just filled a little tray with some water and some ice. What we're gonna do is we're gonna shock this. We're gonna basically throw it in some water to cool it down. Um, the reason being, we wanna stop that shrinkage of the skin around the meat, right? So you wanna have that nice plump sausage. You'll notice when I take one of them out, the one that we probed has already shrunk a little bit above where we put the probe in, and that's because a lot of those juices have run out of that, that hole, unfortunately. But we would, I would rather the majority of the sausage be good and perfectly cooked by knowing the temperature and sacrifice that little bit at the top. And it's still gonna be good and delicious and juicy, um, but a lot of the juices have, have run out of it. What we're gonna do, is I'm gonna take the probe out the opposite way so I can leave it in that hole 
to stop water from going in there, right? And then we're just gonna throw the, throw the sausage in there with the probe and the other ones will just go right in. So let's grab these sausages. Fortunately, that sausage is so tender, I tore it up a little bit, so we're gonna get water in there either way. So I'll we'll just take it out. That's all right. We've got two more beautiful ones. Got that perfect red hue on it. That looks delicious. All right. All right, so at this point you have perfectly cured and smoked jalapeno cheddar kielbasa. Um, you can let it cool and slice it and eat it cold as kind of like a summer sausage type deal. Or you can let it chill down completely and then grill it up like a nice beautiful charred sausage. That's what we're making for dinner tonight. So I'm gonna let these chill for the day and then I'm gonna grill them up this evening. Well, we are now on the final step of our smoky jalapeno cheddar kielbasa. Um, so as soon as the kielbasa cooled down, I transferred it out of the water um, and onto this sheet tray. Uh, so now what we're gonna do is sear it off. We got the Pit Boss Platinum Series Lockhart cranked up to high and it is blasting as you can see. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're not gonna put it directly over the flame. We're gonna kind of work around the flame um, and then move the sausage to make sure everything gets nicely seared. All right, so let's get our sausages cooked up. Um, we're just gonna get a nice sear on these guys, get that, that casing nice and crispy. I mean, they are gonna be delicious. I tasted just the fat of one earlier and they are really good. So let's get these guys on. All right, so you're gonna have to move, work pretty quickly to keep the flames from, from kind of surging up. You can close the heat shield, but I like that flame burst. So at least initially start with the heat shield open. All right, so we started with the heat shield open. We went ahead and closed it. I wanted to get some of those nice flames and when you saw, I got some really nice flames just to touch that skin and, and really get that, that, that fire smoke flavor on it. Um, we closed the heat shield now. Um, we're just gonna get a nice sear on it, crisp that skin up really nicely so we get that snap and maybe a little bit of char. All right, so these guys have a nice little bit of a char on them. The skin should be nice or the casing should be nice and crispy. So we're gonna let these sit for about five minutes. They don't need, need a lot of time to rest. Um, they're in case that juice is gonna settle pretty quickly. Um, and then we're gonna slice into them and try them. I can't wait, they smell so good. All right, let's get into these sausages. I'm gonna cut it a little bit more of a bias on that. And this will be my, my sample sneak piece. Oh my goodness. The curing process really changes the whole sausage experience. I mean, you get that beautiful pink center. I mean, it almost looks like a perfectly medium cooked steak, but look how juicy it stays. I mean, it's just dripping. You can see the cheese in there is just melting away. Oh my goodness. I know it's a little bit time consuming. It's a little laborious, but the outcome of these sausages are just going to glow your friends away, and I mean that in every sense of the word. They are absolutely delicious. But if you want to, you know, just do a fresh sausage if you're stressed for time, you know, don't do that extra step. Don't do the extra day. Make that beautiful, fresh, juicy sausage. Um, you're gonna have to be a little bit more careful on the cooking times, and then you probably don't want to sear it quite as much. Like, I wanted to get that high flame because I knew I had the protection. One of my absolute favorite sausages to make, I, I do this one all the time. Every year we have an annual get together, or a little barbecue cookout, um, and this sausage is always on the menu because it's a hit year after year after year after year. Make it in your backyard. Make it on the Pit Boss Platinum Series Lockhart, available exclusively at Walmart. And I guarantee you, your friends, your family, your loved ones are not only gonna be begging for the recipe, they're gonna be loving you every day until you make it again, because that's how good it is. All right, guys, that's it for me on this episode of Platinum Grilling. I will see you next time. Keep on cooking. You can definitely find this recipe and many more on pitbossgrills.com. Follow me on social media at Chef Sean O'Neill. Can't wait to check you next time. Mm -hmm.